I did a lot of research and I had some important realizations and my goal was really to learn some new things about myself and hopefully transfer some knowledge to help everyone else out too. So I started out thinking I was going to interview many people about their jobs to get a sense of what jobs I liked. And then I realized I don't know 120 hours worth of people. So I decided that I would supplement with some YouTube videos, audiobooks, and it ended up being a lot more complex than I thought it would be. And I had some really interesting results. So it's going to be a pretty contradictory uh, presentation that hopefully will make you question all that you thought you knew about yourself. Okay, so matching your personality. Uh, one of the supplemental ideas was taking personality quizzes. Um, the first time I took a personality quiz, I got the ENFJT personality type. And then I took it again and got a different personality type with an I instead of an E, meaning introvert instead of extrovert. So I was kind of questioning this. So I had someone I knew, my mom, take it as if she was me. Um, and she got I and E split right down the middle. So I'm kind of an introvert, kind of an extrovert with NFJT. Um, and then I also took a look at my interpersonal skills and found that my verbal skills are what set me apart. So why does this help? You may be wondering why I took personality quizzes since a lot of the time these personality quizzes can't really show that much about you. Um, but I found some things that really fit me and I was impressed because before I'd had some results that I did not think um, really fit me at all. So I was impressed when I took them this year. Um, for instance, um, I'm very connected with my friends and family, but sometimes it's hard for me to um, have a great understanding with other people because of a unique perspective, whatever that means. Um, I would work well as a tutor or counselor, and apparently I'm good at speaking. You guys can tell me whether that's true after this. Um, so I could be good as a more inspiring figure who speaks publicly. Um, so now I'm extremely interested in psychology, tutoring, and something that may involve public speaking. So going off of my other goal of teaching others, um, I encourage you to do this yourself, to take the quiz, to have someone else take this quiz for you, and then to have a real deep discussion with them, figuring out who you are. And then you can also do the same thing with interpersonal skills quizzes and just figure out which skills you excel at. Okay, so this is going back to that interview part of my projects that I was originally thinking of. Now this is completely subjective. These are just some ideas of what I figured would be um, signs of happiness based off of my research. Um, thank you so, so much to all of the interviewees that gave me their time to do this. Um, here's just some things that show potential contentedness, um, rating of ability to be promoted, rating of how much they like ratio of time at work to time at home, rating of how important they think their work is, rating of how much they feel appreciated, rating of how satisfied they are with their money, and rating of how much power they felt like they had at their job. So clearly, it's across the board with a bunch of different professions. I have a chemistry professor, a writer, a Google consultant, an ER doctor, etc. There are a bunch of them here. And this just gives a quick glimpse into some areas that people are content with with their jobs. So, trends or lack thereof. I was really hoping to have these clear trends to show me exactly who I was supposed to be, exactly what job I was supposed to have. Um, and then I didn't really get that. And I was trying to figure out at the end of this project, how to present this in a way that would really help everyone. And I had this conversation with my amazing mentor, thank you, um, who asked me what surprised me and went differently than I would expected. Um, and we had a discussion about this and I was surprised by how people don't always match as I expect they would with their jobs. For instance, people that are interested in science and math really value their empathy. Um, also, everybody says that their favorite class is English, or practically everybody. I'm talking about doctors, philanthropists, science, uh, scientists. So there wasn't really this alignment with personality and job that I was really hoping for, or a favorite class and job that I was hoping for in this instance. 
Um, but people are very happy, even if it doesn't seem like their personalities match their jobs. And even when their personalities did match their jobs, they sometimes weren't that happy from what I could tell. So I wanted to find a foolproof way to tell me and others what they could be and how they could spend their lives, but there aren't really the clear trends I was hoping for. And why did I pursue this project kind of going off of the same idea? I had this conversation with my mentor. It's kind of a paradoxical relationship here because it was the fear created by the education system telling me that I had to know who I had to be when I grew up. And it was also this idea of breaking away from the education system and going deeper and thinking more about what I was going to be. So um, I listened to this awesome book, Excellent Sheep, um, about students in the Ivy League schools that don't have passion, they're fearful, anxious, meaningless, purposeless, um, trying to reach this prestige and never learning anything about themselves. And they're just depressed. It's, it's, it's kind of a wreck. Um, so I was scared of not knowing who I was and who I wanted to be. So I was driven to explore that. But now I'm kind of even more scared, to be honest, because of all of these vast contradictions and inconclusive results. So while I do know a little bit more about myself, I still don't have the answer of what I want to do when I grow up. So here are some of the fears with their relative sizes that I had throughout this project and as a result of this project. So I came into this with some fears and then as I thought deeper, they kind of just expanded. Um, for instance, society here is the biggest fear um, bubble. It's huge because this shows all the fear that I'm being driven by society to do something that I don't want to do, that I'm going after a job that's prestigious, that, ha that will give me large amounts of income, um, a celebrated job rather than something that I'm passionate about. That kind of leads into the passion bubble. What if I never find what I'm supposed to do? What if I'm too scared to do what I want to do? Then there's failure. This idea of being terrified to do something original because what if I fail? What if I'm ridiculed? Then there are too many choices and it's another fear. What if I'm good at a bunch of things and I choose the wrong one? What if I'm not good at anything? And then a more personal struggle I had was this idea is STEM right for me. I'd always thought it was. And then through this, I started questioning that. So I started coming up with some ideas how to resolve these fears. And obviously, it's not a perfect resolution because there wouldn't really be a point to this project if there was. Um, but for passion, uh, what I learned was to follow what you like, not thinking of it as job training, but self-training. Uh, Excellent Cheap really emphasized this point. They emphasize going to a liberal arts college because you'll learn how to think rather than going to necessarily a school that's extremely specialized. Um, also, I learned to take the deep humanity classes, even if you are interested in science, because it lets you think in more profound ways. Um, even if classes seem pointless in terms of your expected trajectory, what you plan on being, don't be afraid to try them. They just might show you who you want to be. So take those risks and don't cross things off the list without giving them a fair shot. You don't have to know your job today. There's time to experiment and see whether that's right or wrong for you. So society's role. Basically, I learned to stand up to society. Um, that means wondering why things are the way they are saying no, doing the un unexpected for passion's sake. Questioning things like, why must I think about prestige and status? Why is money so important? Why do I have to go to the best ranked college I get into? Why do I have to take a boring class um, in place of a far more excited one? Um, I learned to study what you want, when you want, then take the jobs that you want to. And yeah, that's kind of scary because then you'll have a chaotic progression of jobs and then studies and it, it isn't a clear path. Um, but at the end of the day, you'll know yourself so much better if you weren't afraid to find what was interesting when it was interesting. In fact, Steve Jobs, he said this in his Stanford commencement speech. Um, he said, you have to trust that the dots will somehow connect in your future. In fact, he was taking a calligraphy class when he was in college. Well, technically, he'd already dropped out of college, but he was there and hanging around, and he took a calligraphy class, even though he was very sciencey and into engineering. And he took this calligraphy class just because it seemed so cool. And it would seem that that wouldn't help him, but he used it with his designs of computers.
So that's very inspirational. As for too many choices, I also learned about this thing called a multi-potentialite, someone who can do a bunch of different things, who's really good at and passionate at a bunch of different things and who um, pursue a bunch of different jobs or have one job that's very interdisciplinary um, that they excel at. And they have a huge edge because of this. So that kind of <laughs> stemmed my uh, fears a little bit about too many choices. And then failure. People are very caught up in gossiping at, um, about others because there's not a whole lot else to do during this quarantine. Um, and other times, obviously, as well. And people are so sure that they alone are to blame for their mistakes. There's really this feeling of shame when people don't succeed. So I learned that there's more to it than skill and effort. I learned that people really have to embrace this and that people have to question why they're letting society and other people's perceptions control what they want to do. So this is the more personal side. Um, my fear that I was pursuing STEM when really I was meant to pursue English. Um, so as a kid, I would write stories and read books all the time. And I only really stopped because I got such a big workload and then I wouldn't stop homework till 9.30 and then I'd want to watch TV for 15 minutes and go to bed and not really stimulate my mind anymore. Um, so I thought about being a writer when I was a kid, but all of society was pushing me away from it and telling me that it was really unstable. Um, so I started telling myself, everyone wants to be a writer, right? That's, that's not something unique to me. That's something that everyone wants and then they grow away from it. Um, but through this project, I've started wondering, is being a writer only something for the brave? Is that why writers are so inspirational? They've been picked out by natural selection and they're willing to defy society and that's why they have such inspirational stories to tell. So then I started wondering, well, maybe I'm supposed to be in English and I'm just not brave enough for it. But then I started thinking about my love for STEM as well, that science and math love. So um, I've been passionate about science blocks since elementary school and I've enjoyed my science classes a lot in high school as well. Um, I remember the science kit I got as a kid where I'd play with magnets and I loved it so much. Um, and a lot of the science ideas and principles are just really interesting to me. And I like thinking hard. I like that productive struggle that science and math allow for. And I really like soothing math problems. And yeah, this is nerdy, <laughs> taking math tests. Um, so some review from this. I would work well as a tutor or a counselor, and that's something I kind of expected. That's something I thought would work well for me, so I'm glad to see that confirmed. Also, I like how this drew a picture of me that shows kind of my contradicting traits in a cohesive picture. For instance, my competitiveness and my compassion working together. Um, but I still have a lot of questions about myself. Um, how does my math and science passion fill in with my, uh, fit in with my English passion? How do my speaking skills work in there? So I want to be a scientist, but I've always had this hesitation about lab work and not working with others and kind of this social, social isolation. Um, clearly, I'm meant to interact with others as shown from my personality quizzes, um, which I kind of already knew. So this confirms some of my fears. Also, I'm fearful that I'm not meant to be in STEM and this fear that society is pushing me towards it. So at the end of the day, I can't tell you what I'm going to be doing in 10 years, but this was not a failure. Um, I've kind of learned to dream and dig up some of my old dreams as a kid through this project. So I wanted to be a geologist, then a teacher, then an environmental scientist, and a psychologist. And I gave up each dream and pursued the next, thinking that I was naive and I didn't really know myself with the last one. But now I've had time to reevaluate and remember that passion and realize how well I would fit with some of those ideas. So I've also been inspired by countless TED Talks, um, showing me all the opportunities I have for such impactful careers. Um, I also saw a lot of passion. Thank you to my interviewees who were so amazing. Um, I saw so much optimism and so much love for their jobs. Um, one engineering professor told me that he would be happy to work on a Saturday night simply because he loves it so much. So that's just dedication. And I really like seeing that optimism and realizing that my job really can be something that makes me extremely happy. I've also learned more about myself, my strengths and my weaknesses, my personality. And at the end of the day, I'm glad I don't have the answer about what I want to be because in a few years I would be heartbroken and nervous as I fell off that one path. 
I also examine society and learn not to be the excellent sheep because I know to look for my passion without becoming anxious about it. And I will take this knowledge and continue to try to break away from society's crazy expectations. And rather than studying eight hours tomorrow night, maybe I'll try to learn something more about me, but knowing me, I'll probably study eight hours tomorrow night and learn something about me. Um, so this project was not a failure. I do not know what I want to be when I grow up, which was kind of the original goal, but there's so much comfort in limiting it down to what I want to be, and I'm okay with being uncomfortable. I'm glad that I know about society's role. Yes, it's really nerve wracking to realize that society has been pushing me around a lot, but before my job, I have to think about who I am versus how I've been influenced. I've also learned to stop ruling things out. Um, that's very important <laughs> because it, it allows me to really think about all of my possibilities without just limiting them based off of a small idea. Um, studying me will take me further than studying for a test, although yes, I will continue to do both. Um, is, STEM for right, is STEM right for me? I like many aspects of it, but there are some pieces that don't quite fit. My love for English, my verbal skills, my empathy, my connection with others. But at the end of the day, I know that I'm passionate to change the world and connect with people. I want to change the world, and there's a lot of criteria for the right job, but I'll put the pieces together when the time is right. I don't have to do that now. If anything, I am further from a decision, something I would not be happy with if I knew that when I was going into this project, but I don't need to have a decision. I need to know me first, and I'm proud of all that I've done to work on me. And addressing that other goal of mine, I really hope that any of you out there who are struggling to figure out what you want to do can do the same. You can take this quarantine um, to really reevaluate yourself, take the personality quizzes, discuss with someone who knows you, and start listening to TED Talks and being inspired about what you could do. So um, I wanted to end this with quotes from my amazing interviewees. Um, thank you so, so much for giving me your time and giving me such inspirational ideas. Um, there are a lot of quotes here um, just showing how amazing they were and what amazing advice they gave me. So I'm just going to give you a second to read through these. Um, and here's one I like especially. I would tell myself to try to not always take the easy road. Challenge yourself. Don't become professionally complacent. And another one I really like is here. Life is an adventure. Take the risks. So thank you so much for watching. I feel that although I didn't end up doing exactly what I had planned, I was able to adapt and learn a lot about me and hopefully help myself with my job path. And I really hope that this was helpful in showing you how you can really rethink yourself and rethink your goals. So thank you for watching. Nice job, Claire. Really, really impressive. I, the thing that struck with me the most um, is that you learned a lot about yourself. You, you said a few times that you didn't feel like you found your career, but you didn't need to and that it's okay to feel like you don't have a decision. And I think there's so many people now, whether they're high school, college, after college, that need to hear that, that it's okay to not have a decision. So I hope that there's people out there listening and knowing that because there's a lot of pressure that I think we put on ourselves, society puts on ourselves. You said that earlier that it's okay. It's okay to not know. And I think this exploring of yourself and this journey really was meaningful to you. So nice job. Thank you. Um, I see we have a couple um, comments here, so I'll read those for you. Um, Mr. Maseni said, Claire, nice job. I think that in 10 years, you'll be happy and a success. Great insight and reflection. Well, thank you. <laughs> Um, and Pat Lore said, Claire, you will clearly change the world. Great job. Excellent insight from a very smart, introspective young woman. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so I'll give it a couple more minutes and see if anyone would like to use the chat feature. For those of you who are listening, um, if you click on the bottom of your Zoom screen, you can um, put comments or ask questions and I could read those aloud.
Liza said, I love you, Claire. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> So you were talking a lot about this English first STEM, um, and I kind of got the sense that you felt like STEM was the right way to go, but English was sort of your passion. Um, yeah, that's an interesting point. So going into high school, I kind of thought of myself as a STEM person. I kind of thought of myself as a STEM person um, ever since, and I hadn't really had the time to consider English. Um, but through this process, I've really had the time to think about that. And now I'm not really sure. I know that I'm passionate about aspects of both. So I, I, I can't really say. And I think that's kind of the point of this project. Yeah, I think, I think it's really interesting the things that you said about all of it. And I think the idea of not making a decision, not feeling like you have to make a choice and sort of exploring all those areas. And maybe somewhere out there, there's a career that has a little bit of both. Um, I think, you know, back a long time ago, it was you're either a teacher, you're a doctor, you're a lawyer, um, or you're a scientist, you know, and now it's a little bit, you can sort of bend those all together sometimes, especially if you have certain interests. So I think continuing to explore, continuing to look into it is, is wise because sometimes quick decisions aren't always the best. Uh, let's see, we have another comment from Claudia. Way to go, Claire. So well done. Thank you. <laughs> it looks like we have a question here from Katie. Um, what was your favorite resource in this project? Did you learn more from the tests and the readings or the interviews? All right. Well, thanks for that question, Katie. Um, I have to say, excellent sheep. After listening to that, I kind of had a mini existential crisis, not going to lie. Um, that was very impactful. It made me really think about why I was doing what I was doing, why I was studying what I was studying, why I cared so much about getting into the best ranked college I could, um, and whether I was supposed to be pursuing science and math or whether I was supposed to be pursuing English. So that really opened up my eyes. Um, another one that comes to mind is this uh, TED Talk I listened to, the Multipotentialite TED Talk, where it talked about um, really embracing all of your different passions. And definitely all of my interviews were so, so helpful. Um, it, it was really interesting to see them in, see all of these professions in such a personal light. Good answer. Um, this is from Craig Mullet. Thinking is more interesting than knowing, but less interesting than looking. Joanna Wolfgang von Goeth. Great job, Claire. This quote reflects the tall talk. Oh, well, thank you. <laughs> All right. Well, if there's no other questions or comments, um, we'll let you get back to your evening. And thank you so much. You did such a great job tonight. Feel 